guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show 334. This week, our special guest is Dalton Castle, the party peacock himself. We'll talk to him about IWC this weekend and the sisterhood of the traveling tights. We also talk about SummerSlam, WWE porn names, the social media, how well is it going? Is the three hour Raw even bearable anymore? And who's a heel anymore? Mayhem Show. Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show 334, and we got a hot one here lined up for you. Uh, as usual, I am Sorgatron, the Master of Ceremonies in uh, the Mayhem Nation here in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. With us tonight again on the couch, as usual, is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. Rolling the shades, there he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up? What's going on, man? How are you? Uh, all right. I'm asking you the questions. Oh, I'm doing fantastic, <laughs> sir. Thank you for allowing me to occupy your couch. There you go. For Choshkapi the, ch the couch. Choshkapi in your face. There you go. And from Corpus Christi, Texas, for one last week where it's so dark at uh, at 9 o'clock uh, so Central Time. So bright. Yeah. Well, he's wearing shades. Either way, let's get around to it. He's wearing shades. Hello, Wrestling Mayhem Show crew. It's the Wrestle Fan here. And it's Tuesday night. So you know what that means? I'm about to make sweet, sweet love to your ear holes. <laughs> okay, wait. Time what out. What is going Chachi on? Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Number one, Wrestle Fan wears his sunglasses at night. Yes. Um,. Number two. So are you right now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those like aren't really. These aren't really sunglasses. And number two, who the hell are you to steal Lunchbox's gimmick? <laughs> oh, he's not here. Fuck so you, Venus. <laughs> Somebody has to. And also joining us again from the Greater Pittsburgh area is the Riz. Hi guys. The Riz. There you go. And hi, hi Chachi. Hi Riz. Hey, hey. Sorg. Hi. 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 Uh, and hi. joining us from some undisclosed location in the Deep South, because we did not ask him, Bo Diggity! Good evening. How are you? I'm here. You're not. Listen to me talk, listen to the rest of us talk, and enjoy it. Bo fucking <laughs> There you go. Of course, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We also have lined up later in this uh, episode a wonderful interview with Dalton Castle. Of course, been popping up in the International Wrestling Cartel here locally in Pittsburgh and all around. Uh, purveyor of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Tights. Go check that out. Just look that up on YouTube and you'll get across it real easy. Uh, but we're the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check us out on iTunes, Blip TV, your Roku box on the Blip TV app, or Stitcher, or anywhere else that uh, podcasts tend to show up. We should be there in some form or fashion. Make sure you get the recent episodes. I know there's a lot of directees out there that aren't updated that probably have died off. Nobody's doing anything with them. They have old episodes. This is 334. So if you find something in the 100s, 200s, that is not a recent place. So keep looking. Uh, but you can definitely get them at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Bear with me. I have a little bit of monitor problems, so I have to put it all the way over here. So I'm not ignoring you people when I talk. Uh, we're also, you can drop us a line at... Good. good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or drop us a, a voicemail to 412-206-WMS0 that's 9670 or uh, you can also uh, check us out hey we're also on Twitter at Mayhem Show we're on Facebook we got an open Facebook group where a lot of discussion is happening we have a lot of fun on there uh, we're starting to tweet oh uh, since we did that since we're having this Twitter discussion um, I would like to personally introduce the first guest of the social media and am ambassador of the wrestling ma'am show okay mr bobby f j town bobby f j town we will we'll do we bobby will do street. updates with tweets from bobby f j town okay during the during the whole show <laughs> he's our social media emirate today emirate. yes okay okay he is our chloe kardashian 
<laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All, um, all you need to know is that he is not Chewbacca. That's it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> you can also check out the Mayhem Show app. It's WMS Gold on your iOS app store for uh, iPad and iPhone versions. Uh, or Also on the Amazon app store for the uh, Android devices. It's a $1.99. It gives you access to uh, uh, some great conversations we have in between uh, recordings here before or after the show. Everything like that. Including some Mayhem baby stuff coming up and that's all i'm going to tell you you gotta check it out to find out what's going on um and, and some other discussion as well and uh and of course quick links to all of our twitter our facebook our voicemail line so you don't have to remember the number and put it in you just open up the app go to contact hit the voicemail you're calling us and you're leaving a voicemail as easy as that go ahead and drunk dallas i give you permission please um yeah, so, rest, and also you can join us here live around about 8.30, 9 o'clock. We get started here. We're doing other shows all through the night. Get started at 7 p.m. Eastern with the awesome cast at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us uh, in our live chat room. Hey, there's a live chat room right there. See? They're all live, live and chatting. Of course, nobody actually says anything right now, so I can display that as chatting. Uh, but that happens. Um, but no, they're in there. They're listening to they're you do the intro. Oh, I, there's no response to the to the intro. Um, there's yeah. no response needed to the intro. Nope. Nope. Damn right. So let's get into it the way we like to with the uh, fan interaction portion of the show. We got a few emails here, so let's get right into it. Um, Bo Diggity, do we have to? Do, do, should we? Should we uh, have your voicemail played since you're here this by uh, by chance this week? Yes. Uh, of course, you should play my voicemail. It's got quality material in it. Got a voice in it. What more do you need? <laughs> All right, we'll uh, we'll get to that right here after the voicemails. Uh, first, I want to address one from uh, Tom Bobbitt, which I believe is Sonic, right? Got that right? Yeah, it's Sonic. I have trouble connecting names. Oh, at least I had a good uh, pick there. It says, greetings. I'm not sure if this is an email for the Mayhem crew or the Awesome Casters. Uh, I, I try to keep the... Yeah, 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 but we already talked about the social media thing over in the Awesome Cast. I think we've done enough for that. I, I don't think there's any, as many wrestling fans over there, but still. Um, but I just got to talk about WWE and social media. For over a year, WWE has dabbled, embraced, and smothered its fans uh, with internet interaction. Wrestling go gossip has always been a staple in the internet, but now smartdom is at an all-time high, and now the wrestling companies have figured out that the net is enhancement and not hindrance to the business. Uh, back in the 90s, Paramount decided that it needed to protect its copyright from uh, Star Trek, uh, from all the webzines, uh, it's Paramount Materials and their... Uh, actually, this, I should probably put this part on Awesome Cast because he goes into a lot about... Uh, parent, uh, I'll just summarize here. Uh, basically, Paramount thought that if you had an unauthorized picture of Captain T James T. Kirk on your hard drive, they should know about it and be able to eliminate it. Mm -hmm. Was the initial reaction because these guys are like, you know, very beholden to physical things, you know? You steal a Captain Kirk doll, that's theft. It makes sense. Uh, but again, that's more of an awesome cast kind of discussion. Um, and and, and uh, the idea that when they were controlling it, they were punishing the people that were actually supporting it in the long run. Um, having witnessed, he goes on, uh, having witnessed Paramount and many others like-minded companies try to stop the sun from rising, WWE took a different approach. I say WWE, but I think a huge thank you should, go, should be levied by... Uh, Zack Ryder for showing WWE the vast opportunity social media was. Anyway, WWE has made that dirt sheet rumor mill work for them, expanded the storylines, and given the talent a forum to explore their characters. The only problem I have with WWE's model of a little is good, so more would be better, I kind of feel sorry for the talent in a way, because they are basically being forced, sorry, encouraged, uh, to have a Twitter, Facebook, uh, and the new kid on the block, Tout, which WWE is invested in, of course. Social media is a loaded gun, and some of the wrestlers can't handle the scrutiny. For every CM Punk and his plethora of witty tweets and uh, on-the-fly commentary, there's an AW who, in an effort of uh, being cutting-edge and funny, strays off the course and uh, of the politically correct minefield. Moving up. Uh, combine that with a high-profile Senate bid from the CEO of the company, and social media can be a modern-day equivalent of fire. Uh, no mic skills has derailed many of the talented wrestlers. What about no tout skills or can't spell while tweeting? 
That's a good point. Uh, just a small bit of advice to the WWE. Social media is a vir virtual Pandora's box and can be laden with trolls. Thinking you can control Twitter is the equivalent of buying a tornado saddle. Hey, <laughs> nice idea, but it's not going to work. For months, WWE has pontificated the glory of its trending subjects and followers, but last night was strangely silent. The new social media ambassador, Red Shameless, attempt to cross media channels with the celebrity equivalent of the Baskin Robbins flavor of the month uh, for last night was Khloe Kardashian. Mm. I was expecting another <laughs> sound. Thank you. There we are. Who I'm sure is a swell person once you get to know her, but what? was out of her what? element. No. The jury is still out on whether her element, what her element is, but mm. I will grant you the lesser mm. of Kardashian mm. evils and try to forgive her uh, for the pop culture silver spoon her sister granted her with and the ability to exhibit common sense decision making when confronted with the video equivalent of rap artists. Sorry, got carried away. Uh, so WWE thought they had a uh, sure trending thing until fans decided to play hashtag WWE porn names and topped all the other WWE trends for the night. Guess nobody wanted to brag about that. Have a great show, guys. Uh, Sonic. P.S. Jericho is a class act, and although I think he's uh, insane to walk away, I'm glad he put Z Ziggler over on his way out. Good luck, Y2J, and hurry back. P.S.S. Not since Gilligan's Island have I dreaded a three-hour tour like the new Raw format. 60 more minutes so we can play the Triple H Brock Lesnar video package for 45 of them while the uh, mid-card job squad sits backstage waiting for a chance. And so thus ends the email. So, yeah, I, we wanted to get into this. Uh, number one, number one, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have, a, I have a very small point on semantics here. Okay. It's not PSS. It is PPS. Yeah, I didn't know if I should correct post, them or not. But it's post post script, not post script script. Just number one. Uh, yeah, I, here's WWE's thing on social media. They do want to use it. I'm glad that they're trying to use it. I'm really glad that they're embracing the fact that this is a thing that is on the internet, and they're trying to be hip and modern. And he is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. You can get burned very very quickly. Ask Chrysler about how social media can work out. <laughs> what, what, what happened with Chrysler? You remember that one? The guy who uh, he, he was an in, or he was a guy who was uh, working for an advertising firm and they were running Chrysler's Twitter account and said something along the lines of great night for some beers and a drive or something like that oh. on Chrysler's account. Ooh. 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 Yeah. It was bad, and I remember it, and that guy got fired, and that advertising firm got dropped, and they picked up somebody else and moved on. But still, that is the sort of thing that can happen. Or you have people who are representing your brand, yeah, and you can only control them so much. Because you want things like Zack Ryder's show. You want things like CM Punk's witty tweets. The problem is, is that at the same time you get that, you also get Tensai telling his Japanese driver to open his eyes, and you get AW on Twitter making not very good jokes. That's the sort of thing that you run into, and the WWE has to understand, and I think they have. I think they've just understood that, okay, for all of the good stuff we're going to get out of this and all of the bad, you know access to celebrity accounts, because by the way, let's be real honest here, Khloe Kardashian wasn't tweeting last night. <laughs> she was not tweeting for the WWE. That Hell was no. wild horse shit. She was tweeting her normal shit in addition to Raw. And somebody was tweeting for her on Raw. There well, was I, clearly somebody just sitting I there still, tweeting. I, I still feel it because I mean, people mention, well, well, she just blo she just uh, tweeted this random blog in the middle of Raw, blah, blah, blah. Well, I, I set up uh, certain uh, promotional tweets all the time for clients. And she's obviously has to be working with a PR person for social media on top of this, or else he, she wouldn't have gotten this fucking gig, right? So, yeah, there's I mean, other stuff in there. So, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not saying she's definitely not tweeting, or is tweeting or anything. I'm just saying I, I, I think that example uh, doesn't mean necessarily that, that it's a surrogate. Well, I, I felt like hers, in particular, were somebody working for the WWE who was sending them out through her account okay i that's how i felt i felt like they were she was saying like parroting clear on wwe points yeah oh yeah definitely that were not even close to being like 
construed or anything like that. It's always, it, I mean, it was literally what somebody would be telling Cole or Lawler in their ear to say. I mean, that's really what it is. Um, that, that's how it felt to me, and that's why I did. I, at least with the guest hosts, they could come on. They could pretend to like wrestling, but at least they were really there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They, were, they still had to act, it, even if they weren't in. Uh, they weren't a fan. And they were just like, "Cool, I'm going to get paid for this crap." They at least acted like it. Mm-hmm. You don't know who's behind <laughs> Twitter account <laughs> or DJ Paul. You just know. Or DJ Pauly D. And Charlie Sheen, they had him on Skype, and really all Skype was, all he was saying on Skype was, yeah, I'm sure that somebody was just emailing, okay, so just say this. Cool. And Charlie Sheen's just sitting there going, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that, that, that guy, I, I'll fight him at SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he yeah. really did sound clueless when he's on Skype, too. So but, that, me, that could be Charlie Sheen, though. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's on a lot of drugs. But. For me, I can at least appreciate guest hosts because they were actually there. They were right. at least there and, and committed to being in a location and being on screen. This, they can ask, just say, hey, listen, just give us access to your Twitter account. We'll take care of it for you. And, and it's probably cheaper for them to do it that way. Right. Like it's, probably, mean, it's probably cheaper for Raw to get a celebrity on Twitter than it is to get a celebrity there in-house. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So that they pay like five grand. Yeah. I'm sure five grand, maybe ten. And they say, listen, can we borrow your Twitter account for the night and say that you're tweeting for the WWE? And they'll go, yeah, sure, because Chloe Kardashian is, yeah, I mean, just listen. They make a crap load of money, but they do it. And they know for the fact that they're that this, this gravy train is only going to last so long because there's not a talented one in the bunch. So. They're just going to make sure that they get every avenue of money and funding that they can. The fact they had to get Chloe is funny as hell to me. That they didn't, <laughs> they didn't even try, they didn't try like they didn't even try to get like her other sister. They got like the lame one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got, they the, got one. the one that looks like a foot. Yeah. So good for Khloe Kardashian for getting that cheese. Good for her. I'm, so, I'm hopeful the next pick, like, fucking uh, uh, Carl Edwards. I'm sure Carl Edwards is going to happen. So, so, I mean, aside from this, I, I, I really think we're at, just like I said was going to happen, I think we're going to have this, uh, this this alternative subculture happen last night in response to these sorts of things. Uh, the WWE porn names. Hashtag. Which was, I believe at one point, trending on Twitter, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, again, not mentioning that. Notice that WWE fails to mention that. Ah, well, you're not going to. Yeah, you, you can't expect them to mention something like that. But that's the seedy underbelly of the internet rallying back at their attempts. And you're going to have that. And I think that's where we're going to find us fans of our sense of humor are going to find our entertainment with the whole social media experiment. It's not going to pop up in the uh, WWE app, which is in, eh, by the way, um, but better than previous apps, I'm sure. Um, this is this this is a whole new... Uh, so do they react to something like that? There's no... Okay, Twitter, question for you guys. Yeah. Who were you more impressed with yesterday or yesterday for the Twitter revolution, whatever? Khloe Kardashian... I'm waiting for it. No, you're not going to do the uh, Wookie song, or <laughs> or cranky Vince. <laughs> Are you talking about the time where he was retweeting everybody and just saying "fuck you"? Yes. <laughs> that uh, you know what I gotta say. One person that does beat them all, probably Derek Bateman, because Derek Bateman has been having so much fun with these but, social media ambassadors. But we're talking about the underbelly. Derek Bateman is WWE, though. Yeah. We're talking the underbelly that's not going to get on TV. Like, the <laughs> Hacksaw Jim Duggins. The fake Hacksaw Jim Duggins show uh, tweets. The Cranky Vince's. The, the, the WWE Chris Creative. Under, the something Chris like that. Underscore wall. Yeah. It's... They were more entertaining than the entertainment's entertainment. Mm-hmm. So it was like, uh, I'm going over here and see what Cranky Vince is telling to go fuck themselves. Wait, can I call? Let's let's just I just want to put this out there. So while we were going through the uh, WWE porn names, 
which were hilarious. My favorite, the American Cream Dusty Loads. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Orton tweeted, just saw all the creative WWE porn names, and I must say I'm very proud. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Randy and, that, Orton, and that's like oh, what we're oh. talking about. You can't control your wrestlers to not mention those things, right? But Randy Orton will not get yelled at for that. Not in the oh, yeah. not second. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the Cock and Hole Express. My favorite uh, was uh, Isaac Yank of DDS. The DDS stands for Dirty Dick Sucking. <laughs> uh, uh, James J. Dildo. <laughs> Assy Freddy Blasty. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. On that, uh, we we could rail against the social Sonic, media all night. Sonic makes a good point. Hmm. Uh, Twitter has become the mystery science theater. It is of live mm-hmm. events. It is, isn't it? Though, because I mean, how yeah. many times you like here in Pittsburgh, you know, a Steeler game is going on. You know, the Pirates now that they're doing good, a game is going on because yeah. we follow you know guys like Mikey and all of our friends. Like Mikey and Big Bob and all of them, and, and, and we're getting a running commentary. You know, I, I have not watched very many games for the Pirates this season, but I know exactly how they're doing. Right. Thanks to you know, thanks to Twitter, I, like I'm living vicariously through everybody who does pay for cable. You know who else you should follow during Pirate games? Hmm. The Riz. The Riz. Thank you. The Riz because Riz, Riz vocal. tweets things out. During uh, pirate games, and it's fantastic. Thank you, Riz. You're welcome. <laughs> credit where credit is due. Bo Diggity does not shade. <laughs> Bo fucking Diggity. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have a problem. Yes. Um, we, do. we have an email that needs read. Yes. That's typically read with a Russian accent. Yes. Um, our, I can uh, hand- our resident Russian accent. Isn't here. We should have had him like voicemail this email. Yes. <laughs> I, someone, I someone, call him up right now. Can someone do a Russian accent? Hold on. Let's let's let's, let's try this. Wait, 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 hold on. First of all, let, let me let me see if we can get something sorted out here. And um, you should call him. I, we'll, we'll see if we can do something. Can somebody read the lunchbox mail in the meantime? I will. I will read the lunchbox. Mail. Excellent. Excellent. See, I was going to offer to read it. But I didn't want to upset him and not have it done with the Russian accent and the music. No, it has to be done with the accent and the music. And I don't want to ignore the fact that he sent an email just because we can't do it with the voice. Because we got to do this right. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, 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 I'll go on with yeah, the Lunchbox email. Read the, the, sure. the box mail. Okay, it's entitled Lunchbox Says, y'all. What's up, hot dogs? Papa Lunchbox here, riding in from the deep south. I saw SummerSlam and Raw and Lucha Libre CMLL, so let's dig in. I got to see the new Mystico, used to be Sin Cara. I also saw some great women's wrestling, Ultimo Guerrero, ladies who weren't wrestling, and a little person dressed as a gorilla. Great stuff. I had no clue what was happening, but that somehow added to the experience. SummerSlam? I bought SummerSlam, and let me tell you, it was not worth the hassle. I should have bought a nice dinner for myself and Lady Lunchbox and watched it on the shitty illegal stream. In fact, the illegal stream would have been higher quality than the fucking choppy mess that was the WWE stream. I spent the majority of the Samus Del Rio match refreshing, signing in, and switching players. And Samus? He's a heel now, right? All of his actions have been very heely. The only difference is that he's doing them to a guy who ki- who's kind of a dick. Much to my surprise, Miz Ray Ray was a decent match. Well done, Miz, for pulling off something I wouldn't have thought possible. Triple H Brock was strange and inter- uninteresting. Also, where was the sad Hulk walking away music at the end? Raw was a better show, I felt. The good. Jericho Ziggler was a blast, better than the, uh, better than the pay-per-view. Got to see a Damien Zandau cartwheel. Always a plus. I like this Punk Cena thing. More of this. The bad. AJ isn't re- interesting at all anymore. Oh, Cute? oh thanks. No. Thanks, Lunchbox. Wait, oh. no, hold on, hold on. Cute? Yes. Sexy? Very much so. But interesting? No. It's a shame. I How think you're make- interesting, AJ. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> he, threw in some, he threw in some compliments there. Um, How to make better. 
keep Kane violent, skip the anger management for Daniel Bryan, let them have a hardcore flaming hell in the cell loser gets butt fucked by Paul Bearer match. I'd watch that. What the oh, butt fucking? Yes. Not apparently. I would, um, I, I would watch that too. Okay. Uh, also, no more, no more douchebag social media ambassadors. <laughs> Keep these failed genetic experiments to fuck off my television. Chloe Kardashian, I would rather fuck a dead goat through a cheese grater. <laughs> Bitch, you look like a foot. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Have a great show, y'all. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I did not receive a response back. Uh, I, I, oh, I did tell him, I did tell him, uh, ignore if naughty busy. Whoa. So, uh, um, AJ, AJ, do you have something lined up for us here? I think I can handle a Russian accent here. This is a, 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 seems like a fairly short enough email. I think I can handle it. We need the, you have the music queued up. Uh, sword, can I have, uh, some music, please? Level A. I am, uh, level A. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I gotta turn it on. Oh, it's not coming in. <clears throat> Phil, 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 more filling. <laughs> Still filling. We're filling. We're filling. We're filling this spot. Waiting for Sword to get my song on top. Play it. Wow. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm doing over speakers. Sorry. Go. Level A? Yes, please. I can't find level A. Oh, there oh, it is. Oh, just play, just play Tetris music. It's loading. Phil, 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 Phil. Oh! The rock? Oh, hold on. Oh, this is way longer than I thought it was going to be. That's what she said. Just pick out some good points, please. I'm going to go through the whole thing. Hey, it's me, it's me, it's Big PPC Field. Very good show last week. It was impressive that DJ Lunchbox had the throat control to keep up the excellent accent from last week's email. Props to everyone involved in Shuto. Per last week's Remember When, that was then was then favorite women wrestler. I would say notable mentions would be Jazz, Molly Holly, and Nidia. I think all did well while they were here, or maybe I just enjoyed Nidia and Jamie Noble. Anyways, I would still say favorite is Beth Phoenix or Natalia or Trish. Let's just make a three-way match and the winner gets to be my favorite. Winner is probably Trish with Canadian Screwjob, if you know what I mean. Heyo! Heyo! <laughs> Super Slam, yeah, it happened. Hooray! A new United States champion Antonio Cesaro. Thank goodness that Santino finally got what he had coming to him. Santino clearly has no need for a rematch since he and his Cobra are clearly inferior and have many shortcomings and clearly has issues on how do you say getting it up. Ha ha. Antonio. Man, he, he can really hates Santino. Defend European Championship and bring back some prestige and respect to a mid-level championship. Daniel Bryan beat Kane just like he should have. Roll up or not, what the hell right, at least he won. Challenge question. When is the last time you saw Kane tap out to anyone? Maybe Kurt or Taker, since I cannot think of any time Kane capped out. Bigger and better things I hope for d -Bry. You gotta love it. Booker Boys. Primetime player lost to Team Boom Jimmy or whatever. Now anyone who called the black guys to win is not only borderline racist, I guess technically you are in fact correct. <laughs> Don't really fuck it. Someone matches credible. Uh, I think we're losing them. Oh, that's my 
Sheamus beat Del Rio in a controversial victory by the Celtic Warrior and apparently Great White kind of reminds me of Kerwin, who always said, if it ain't white, it ain't right. Good possibly for Remember When segment, eh? Kerwin White. Anyways, the <laughs> Sheamus win is peace. And funny thing, what is Booker T GM of SmackDown when Del Rio gets screwed? Well, I GM and I was taking a nap, you dig? Booker <laughs> T, <laughs> dog. <laughs> Miss beat Ray. No offense, Ray, but no one over ten years old thought she would win this match. Period. That is all. <laughs> Miss equals awfully entertaining, getting close to back to being awesome. <laughs> Kept Rudolph was fucking terrible, and I guess that's what the divas did was dance around and dress is pretty much comparable to Kevin Rudolph being Godfather, and all the divas are the holes. Definitely <laughs> 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 does not take it seriously, so why should anyone else? But I'm not quite giving up yet. Hope this changes. Multi platinum, my ass. Just my opinion. <laughs> Cena, not bad. Obviously, Cena was not really doing anything to show what he was the, in the double submission by Punk and Cena on him. So Punk may have ultimately screwed Cena a little, but Cena totally screwed him with trying to pick up scraps with his weak-ass SDF. Oh, it's true. It's that true. Brock and Triple H in main event. It was great to see Brock kick his ass whether you like him or not. Triple H had good in-ring career. He should be done, in my opinion. Brock's gone till November or WrestleMania or whenever. Raw was all right. Seems like he's losing momentum after build-up for Brock, and him leaving again really has made Double Double E lose steam for sure. Let's hope it build up again with new stars from NXT like Seth Rollins or Cassius Ono or and several other stars they could push. TNA, we will say if Aces and Eights will have upper hand against Impact Team, I guess. Let's hope that don't blow it. Captain is the man. Random thought of the week. <laughs> Triple H are both going to be gone for a while. What are your favorite Brock and Triple H moments? Mine is Brock versus RVD match at King of the Ring and Brock versus Hogan where he squeezed Hogan until Hogan was bloody mess. Dominate. <laughs> Triple H moment would be where DX dressed up like the nation and he was the croc. Or when he and Austin were the power trip with Vince and they just beat everyone with chairs and were dominant. If you could be any dessert, what would it be? <laughs> I would be a Brock. I was a vegetable because I would be green. Now what mean? Please have Mayhem crew answer questions. Till next week, it's me, it's me, it's Big PPC feel. P.S. Maybe I will figure out when and where to do Google Hangout deal. Keep up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, but you, you know, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to get the uh, the Hangouts going uh, during the show again. Uh, I'm obviously having oh, the music still going. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's uh obviously i'm having some hardware trouble even tonight so um wow lots of questions uh brock and triple h moment let's do this really quick because we're really running long uh, for this first half here uh you got something there chuck yes uh brock when he face planted on the moon salt <laughs> and uh there's a lot of good triple h moments uh mainly when he would get injured and finish the match anyhow yeah yeah um because whether you like it or not, dude was a beast in the ring. Uh, this goes along with the being injured, but my favorite moment that involved Triple H, but he wasn't the focus of it, was the time that Triple H got hurt in that DX versus Edge and Orton match, and Orton went <laughs> insane with the chair. I believe at New Year's Revolution. Uh, Brock, I, I can't think of a Brock one. I, well, Brock had some great matches with uh, Undertaker in, in uh, Hell in a Cell. I remember it real good. So, uh, What about you, WrestleFan? Favorite Brock memory was when he uh, pushed Zach Gowan down the flight of steps. <laughs> <laughs> and and favorite Triple H memory, I'm going to go with that New Year's Revolution one. The best was when Randy Orton tried to bring a chair into the ring and then was about to hit Triple H with it yeah. until he saw that the referee looked at him and then he just swatted it down. <laughs> what insane, Riz. For, for Brock Lesnar, I like when he bounces. <laughs> <laughs> But no, seriously, for triple for uh, Brock Lesnar is when he broke uh, Hardcore Holly's neck. Oh, 
<laughs> and for Triple H, uh, I don't really have one for tri- well, I guess when he joined T- DX and stormed WCW. Uh, AJ? Uh, my favorite Triple H moment was when he and Shawn Michaels dressed up as Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon. And dance and Shawn Michaels dancing around the ring while Triple H is pretending to be Vince McMahon. Possibly one of the funniest moments in all of Raw history. Uh, my favorite Brock moment seeing is for some reason I don't remember Brock's entire first run. <laughs> so, mm. um, it was mostly on SmackDown. Yeah, and then yeah. Um, I'll go with uh, Bobby realizing that Brock Lesnar is really just a human shark. And <laughs> I looked at Brock Lesnar and went, oh my god, he really does eat people. <laughs> there you go. Uh, dessert, uh, I won't go into veggies because I can't really... Uh, that's, that's our question for our wrestlers. Uh, dessert, I want to go with a uh, Flintstones push-up pop from back in the day. Chachi? Uh, I'd have to say uh, Boston cream pie. Hmm. Nice choice. Russell fan. No, no reason. Let it leave it to imagination. <laughs> Russell fan? Uh Brownie Sunday. Riz? Uh shit. Uh Klondike. AJ? Cookies and cream, ice cream, and get the fuck out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Nice, nice. Alright, with that, I think we need to go. Oh wait, I got a voicemail from Bo Tickety, of course. Oh, no. We had another one, but we can't play it. I can't tell you why. Even SmackDown, he found he's been finding that guy to do that to. He's been he's been around enough armories and really <laughs> shit to know the guy who's going to get way too into it. He knows that guy, and he's going to find him, and he's going to go. I'm going to scream in your face, and that guy's like, "Much applause! Yes, <laughs> yes, yes!" Yeah, that's what happens every time. Awesome. And with that, let's take your damage for falling down. It's time for the Indie Minute. 
in the minute, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. The, the first, uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about on this week's in the minute. Yeah, I was wondering why it's still an AJ. Um, <laughs> the first thing I want to talk about on this week's in the minute is the event that I went to that this past weekend in Austin, Texas, for Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Our good friends over there. It was a very, uh, very great event uh, that featured the main event of ACH and the Kings of the Underground defeating the Children of Pain 2.0. Uh, people like Eric Cannon, Christina. Miri came in, had great matches uh, with some of the local talent there. It was a really awesome show. Uh, look out for the DVD to come out uh, soon. Speaking of DVDs, uh, go to smartmarkvideo.com uh, to get DVDs from all of these great indie wrestling companies, including ACW, including their brand new DVD. Look at this, visuals. I got I got prepared for this shit. Um, for their April show, Peace, Love, and Anarchy. Uh, you can also, if you go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com, they have a few of these variant covers that I'm holding right here. Um, that you won't be able to get on Smart Mark Video. Um, and they're, they're at $5 extra, but it's definitely worth because there's some great artwork here, and uh, it's really awesome stuff. Uh, Special fans of the mini Don West. I fucking you're sell right. shit like no one's business, okay? Do you want some trading cards? I will fucking sell you trading cards and then possibly swim in them. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> But uh, go, to, go to Anarchy Championship Wrestling.com. Their next event is September 16th back at Mohawk in Austin, Texas, where Jerry Lynn will continue his retirement tour as he faces Robert Evans. Um, it's going to be a really great event. Uh, so go check them out and go support them. Uh, I'm next going to talk about um, something that's coming up very soon for Chikara. Uh, one of their big events every year, King of Trios, is back. Uh, in the month of September, uh, this year they like they usually hold it at the uh, ECW Arena Philadelphia. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Uh, they're holding it in Eastern Pennsylvania this year, um, but they have all three nights of the event. They're still going to have the fan conclave like they always have. But it's just going to be very interesting. A lot of interesting teams, uh, people from Japan. There's a uh, team ECW that's going to be represented. There's a uh, the Faces of Fear uh, have a trio, including Meng and the Barbarian. Nice. Uh, that's just fucking amazing. Um, a lot of great, a lot of great stuff. Uh, like the Jakara guys, and you can see a lot of international talent too as well. Convening uh, in Eastern Pennsylvania for that weekend. Um, it's going to be a very interesting event. If you want to go check them out, go to ChikaraPro.com. You can get your tickets for uh, all three nights and the Fan Conclave. Uh, I would highly suggest you go to that because that is definitely a big one of the biggest shows in indie wrestling. Yeah, every the Conclave year. is amazing. We went one uh, a couple years ago, uh, a few of us from the show, and it was it was a great time. That's where I met the Turtle Wiener, and he jobbed to be a Connect Four. Yeah, exactly. Um, it was a bit, so the other thing, check match carpro dot com. Get all your tickets there and get more information about that. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, for Ring of Honor. Uh, they uh, announced today, big news, that they are reopening their uh, dojo uh, beginning October 22nd. They're training. It's a training school, but it's also for more experienced wrestlers to get more you know, knowledge about pro wrestling and to learn more. Um, you can go to ROHwrestling.com. All the rates for the classes are available and uh, the, um, the availability and times and stuff like that. Uh, it's the facility is located in Bristol, PA. So I would definitely suggest, uh, if you are interested in taking classes with the ring of honor, I would highly suggest you, uh, stop by there and, uh, go, uh, learn more about the wrestling craft, um, it, or even start out. And I really think, uh, you know, you know, coming, coming out as a fan, but, uh, I, I think if there's anywhere to train, it's not an obviously straight to WWE training or anything like that. I think this is probably one of the top ones. Uh, regardless yes. of what you think, what they're doing with TV and stuff, it's like the right guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, and, 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 and the fact that they do have, you know, for whatever level you think it is, national TV, that could be a potential breaking out point for you or a starting point if you're doing well in that school, uh, which I imagine is would be an option. Um, I, I think that would be a really good place to start if you're anywhere in that area or you're crazy enough, you just want to fucking go wrestle and learn how to do it. That's probably a really good uh, place to be. So Absolutely. Uh, like I mentioned, Delirious, the head trainer. I know Jim Cornette does have some involvement in that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to learn from some really great names, I would definitely suggest you go try that out. Uh, speaking of Delirious, uh, they also announced that uh, in due time they will be releasing a Best of Delirious DVD. Uh, I believe also that includes a shoot interview, so that should be very interesting. Um, and uh, a list of some of his best matches in uh, Ring of Honor. Um, if you want to go check that out, go to ROHwrestling.com. I'm not sure the exact date when they will be releasing it, but it should be out soon. Uh, so go check that out. That's definitely something uh, you may want to pick up. 
Uh, and the next thing I'm going to talk about is has to do with Sorgatron Media because I know they were involved in a big event this past weekend for Resolution. No, I want to clarify. It was not Sorgatron Media. Uh, I was, true, true. Uh, it it Sor- is not Sorgatron, Sorgatron. Media. I, I was there. I, 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 I work as a camera for uh, for Prime Wrestling. Um, I is not Sorgatron Media, so I just want to make that absolutely clear. Um, not that I'm trying to distance myself. I just don't want to <laughs> take any credit for holy shit that event. Um, and I mean that in a good way. I just want to clarify that too. Um, well, it was a, it was a crazy event. Again, friends of the show, uh, Jason Gorey and uh, Michael Fassad, uh had a tremendous TV title casket match to start the show off. <laughs> to start the show off. Other than that, it was 11 uh, great matches. I can't think of a bad one all night. I know I say that a few times, but I legitimately can't think of a bad match that wasn't amazing for one reason or another. Uh, leading up, of course, until like, the sixth match, uh, the last of, until intermission, uh, where Rhino took on Jason Bain. And uh, this happened uh, for you guys on video. The ring collapsed. The ring literally collapsed. There's a picture of it there in Anatica at intermission as they're trying to get the thing back together. Uh, this is just moments after the uh, the match ended here uh, that I Instagrammed uh, over the weekend. Uh, basically, what happened was uh, they were they were you know real high impact matches you're going to expect from guys like Jason Bain uh, if you're familiar with him in uh, formerly in IWC and in the Cleveland uh, Ohio area, um, and, and 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 him and Rhino uh, hitting the ropes really hard, really high impact match. Uh, all of a sudden, Rhino hits the ropes, like he, I think he was going to charge Bane or something like that. And the okay, remember when the rings collapsed in WWE, and like right. and the poles came mm-hmm. in like this, and and you know you're always like, I don't think a ring would actually collapse like that, right? I mean, is that the thought that a lot of you guys had? In the yeah, long run, they're always, they're you're just like, oh, they just did that for effect, right? No, that's what fucking happens when a ring collapses. That is legitimately <laughs> what happens when a ring collapses. And I think that's why a lot of people thought it was fake and fixed. No, duct tape put that thing together afterwards. It was legitimate. Um, and, and before that, like, I felt something bad was going to happen. Because literally every time Rhino hit the ropes, the ring moved like a whole, like, inch every direction. Oh wow! Every direction, mm. and I'm like, this, this is, this is pretty heavy, and then it went, and it went down. It was just like, wow. Um, so that happened. Uh, aside from that, they, they did get it together. Unfortunately, a 20 minute, and this is live on I pay per view, by the way. So I think I got your money's worth for 15 dollars there if you caught that on Sunday. Um, oh, wow. And, and, and beyond that, they had uh, uh, Petey Williams versus M Dog, which was the first time ever those guys met. Amazing match between those two. Um, they both kicked out of the Kitty and Destroyer and uh, and M Dog's move. Um, I forget what it's called at the moment, but the flippy move he does. Um, if you see yeah, it, you know what I'm talking one. about. Um, the one with a lot of flips. The one with a lot of flips, you know. Um, but it, it was it's just great to have it in that big venue. Jimmy Jacobs, Johnny Gargano. Uh, went all over the place as, as a Gargano match he usually does at Resolution. Um, so that was interesting to follow. Um, and, and uh, geez, so the rest of it escapes me, but there's so much. Oh, Matt Mason and, uh, and Crimson had a hardcore match. Uh, that was, that was tremendous. Guardrails were used, thumbtacks, a broken mirror piece. Um, it, it was, it was just unbelievable. Uh, so go check that out. It is available still uh, on Go Fight Live, GFL TV, you know, GFL.TV, if you want to check that out now. Uh, Blu-rays and DVDs will be uh, available shortly. Uh, they, I think they're actually doing a pre-sale pack that includes a, uh, a T-shirt over at uh, PrimeWrestling.com. But I got to tell you, from the, the seat I had, it was uh, definitely one of the most exciting things I've been involved with uh, on that stage. Uh, so, so go check that out again, prime wrestling.com and, uh, support friends of the show there and some really, really fucking good wrestling. Uh, so, so please go check that out. So next cool. there, Mr. Wrestle fan. And the next thing I want to talk about is something that sort of media will be involved with. Oh shit. And that is, <laughs> and that is the big event coming up this uh, weekend for our friends at international wrestling cartel, IWC cage fury, uh, one of the big events they hold every year uh, this Saturday uh, in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania at the Quinn Sports Center. Main event, uh, Logan Shulo uh, defending the IWC heavyweight title against John McChesney. Shulo! Um, Shulo! Um, uh, like we mentioned before, Jason Gorey and Michael Fassad will be wrestling at IWC as well uh, in a weapons hanging from the cage match. Uh, mm-hmm, so that's mm-hmm. definitely going to be very interesting. I, and I've heard, about some, I, I've heard about some of the weapons that may be involved here. 
And I understand there was a written out paper list that was sent to Chuck Roberts. Mm. With some interesting things on it. So we'll see what makes the cut. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. Uh, <laughs> makes the cut. It's, it's, it, 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 yeah, especially with these two after the match they had this weekend. I'm sorry, what's that, uh, what's that there, Chuck? I said I, I, hope, I hope they still have the dildo. I don't think the dildo. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there is a mandate that the dildo will not make the cut in IWC ever again. Um, oh, I, I'm pretty sure. I, I can't. I can't confirm or deny that, but I just have a feeling that will not happen again. Uh, but no. And, and if you, uh, I, 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 I could give you a hint. All I got is if, if you saw what Gory uh, now comes out with. Uh, th- uh, after this past weekend, I think I think you're going to be very surprised because I think he's going to do the same thing here, and it will be an, it, it will be one of the hanging weapons. Um, very cool. That's my guess. That's my guess. My speculations. Drop through the bombs, grapevine, but I'm just story. saying you're, it's going to be a very very interesting match. And uh, other than that, Zima Ion makes his return against Anthony Nice. Uh, mm-hmm. the X Division champion's gonna be there. Holy shit, he's yeah, gonna be in the house. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that alone, um, adding that to my resume. What? Sandy Callahan versus Rich Swan for the Super Indy t- title. That, that that should be very interesting. Uh, um, Rich, Swan, Rich Swan, former, uh, or, should I say, current uh, Dragon Gate USA star. So, and they got a bunch of young guys in here. Uh, so it, it, some of these guys off of the Proven Ground sh- Ground Show, which was pretty good. Matt Cannon, who's off the Proven Ground Show against uh, Pepper Parks with uh, Justin Idol returning. And with that, hey, Russell fan, you don't have any more indie minute, do you? That is all we have for this week in Because right there, Dalton Castle and Ray Rowe. Let's get to why that's important. On the line right now is Dalton Castle rocking the Neil Diamond behind him. Yeah. And, and coincidentally, on the shirt too. You know, you wear that. I, I, you know, I, I. One thing I wanted to ask about was the uh, 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 sisterhood of the traveling tights, and you wear that shirt a lot from the episodes I was going through. It's my weekend shirt, and that's when I do the episodes. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so, uh, Don Castle, of course, uh, we talk a lot. We mentioned him a lot on here on the show. Uh, involved with uh, locally here with the Interna- International Wrestling Cartel. Sorry. Uh, and uh, you're actually going to be coming up on Cage Fury this weekend uh, in Elizabeth, PA. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, you, you've been with IWC for what, over a year now? Uh, yeah, I think uh, July would have made a year. So, mm-hmm. yeah, over a year now. Excellent, excellent. Um, now, I, and I know you, you're involved with a lot more. Because, uh, again, like I mentioned, the, the Sisterhood of the Traveling Tice show you do online. But you're actually a radio DJ up in Albany. Oh, yeah. Radio, baby. It's uh, it's pronounced Albany, you Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Apparently, I can't even announce the uh, the towns around here. So it's not surprising that I messed it up. So No worries. I forget you. Excellent. But yeah, I, I do a, I do an afternoon show Monday through Friday on a, a rock station out here called Q103. And it, it's uh, the Sister of the Traveling Tights was kind of my way of kind of molding my two worlds together. I, I talk a lot of my wrestling on air, and uh, we have a good presence online with our wrestling. Look at that! That's my, uh, <laughs> that's my things there. And uh, I wanted to take the camera on the road with me and show people what I do. And instead of just talking about it on, on the radio, so people might go on the website and kind of check it out. And oh, it's been fun. Yeah, you, you're uh, well over 20 episodes here. Um, and and, and it, it's pretty cool because it, it's kind of like a road diaries for you. And you get to talk to a lot of different people. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I've gotten lazy the last couple of weeks. I really haven't put the effort in. But uh, Cage Fury, it'll be back on the next week excellent excellent uh so again like i say you're 20 episodes in on this what what's your uh favorite interview uh from the, from the entire time oh i've got i've got plenty I, I enjoyed my time with Brody lee uh or, or luke harper i don't know why that one just clicked I, very little editing i had to do with that um my i think my favorite memory from doing it was with uh coco beware Mm-hmm. It was it was both the most entertaining one I think I've done, in my opinion, but also the scariest, because I thought at one point he was going to strangle me. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I don't, if, you, if you watch the episode, I, I get him singing Piledriver, and then he wants me to sing along with him, and I 
I don't know the words to that song, and I, I, I know a <laughs> few of them, but I just I blanked out completely. And he just he knew he was not happy. Yeah, I thought it was weird that in the middle of a song that you put his hands around your neck on that one. So I oh, thought I thought normal. he was just that's, getting into it, right? That's how birds say hello, peacock to a parrot. That's that's how we do it. Yeah, I mean, he was here for a legend show. He seemed like the nicest guy, you know, and, and telling us about Frankie and everything. And uh, yeah, I, you evoked an emotion out of him that I didn't expect from uh, the Birdman. <laughs> I should have poked harder. I, I could have got a different emotion out of him too. <laughs> 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 Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, you're also known as uh, the Party Peacock, amongst other things. Uh, definitely one of the most flamboyant guys. Amongst we, other things, like what? Like I don't know, like, um, whatever you call yourself. I don't know other promotions. Uh, what other people I hear call you? Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, you're definitely like one of the most uh, 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 out there personalities we definitely see in this area. Uh, uh, so, wh- where did the Party Peacock come from? Where where, where does that come from inside you? Uh, the party peacock. It, it was a collaboration between. I have a tag partner, and then the in Western New York area, Will Clarissi, and we we've tagged together a lot. And that kind of was a it happened together. I mean, we just kind of got paired off, and we're like, hey, we're actually the same person. We should we should definitely be a tag team. And we had to think of a name. And uh, the the song I come out to, the Katy Perry song, was playing, and we're like, peacocks. That's funny. We should be that. And then we start to thinking about it. And it all made sense. It all actually just kind of fell in a roll where we're loud, we're colorful, uh, we're obnoxious, we want the attention on us. And uh, if I don't know if anybody's really looked it up, but the closest descendant to, uh, to a philosopher is actually a peacock. And we're dangerous, just like a philosopher. So, I mean, it fit both our personalities. We've taken it when we're not with each other and we take it when we're together. So that's, that's where the peacock comes from. I, I got to honestly uh, take a moment and say that that was a lot deeper than I actually thought it was going to be. <laughs> I was getting inside you. Uh, you I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna move your you were, around. that, that was, uh, that was not the, ex- the answer I was expecting. Or you're like, Oh man, I like cock. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I was like, man, I, I wanted bright tights and, and have bright feathers and, Peacocks, yeah, yeah, that, that goes along with it. Well, it was, it was uh, my my whole thinking was it was probably the same thought process that went into the South Carolina Gamecocks. They're just <laughs> like, dude, let's see what animal we can pick to make the m- most messed up like mascot Chance. in the world. <laughs> Peak, uh, see, uh, Gamecocks. That that's like the elephants. <laughs> That would That's be amazing. Well, yeah, let's be the elephants, a big fat animal with a long nose that looks like a penis. <laughs> <laughs> so people hunt me for my tusk. Join us, on, join us on this week's Wrestling Mayhem show as we talk about penises with Dalton Castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sums it up. Should I tweet that? I'm not, I'm not down with the social medias. I'm going to tweet it. Okay, uh, that'll get the butts and seats. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we actually have uh, uh, somebody, uh, uh, unfortunately, is uh, unable to be with us today, uh, DJ Lunchbox. Uh, Did he die? No, he, well, almost. He's on vacation in South Carolina. Um, so, Home of the Gamecocks. Home of the Gamecocks, <laughs> ironically. So there you go. Uh, he did He did uh, uh, drop us some questions of... Uh, variety of areas here um so i wanted to get to them before we uh, lost them there uh he says uh well first uh, the standard uh, why are you a wrestler and what made you want to be a wrestler why are you a human huh why do you ask him that <laughs> what do you mean well, maybe you want to be a wrestler yeah it's clearly in my blood i don't know i don't know if i sat down and decided this is what i need to do it, it, it kind of it all just fell into place I was a uh, collegiate wrestler. I, I did high school wrestling. I wrestled four years in college for the NCAA's, and then uh, that ended. All my best friends were already doing pro wrestling. Uh, Jimmy Olsen, Colin Delaney, and I've been around that since I was 15. And it came to time to uh, make a decision. What do you want to do? And I was like, I want to be an actor, and I also want to be an athlete. And these are the 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 perfect medium was to be a pro wrestler excellent excellent uh he follows that up uh with who would win in a fight between mr mcfeely and king friday me oh mr mcfeely the, the stupid mailman 
<laughs> yeah. Did you see the video where he made a kid cry, though? Mr. McFeely, no, the mailman? Yeah. Are we talking about Mr. The, Rogers? Yeah. yeah. M- Mr. Yeah. McFeely didn't make the mailman, didn't make the kid cry. Let's get, let's get this straight. It was a giant panda bear. <laughs> That's what made the kid cry. That'll make anybody so, cry. I know. The panda, terrifying. The panda the, was in the his panda back was pocket, purple, though. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah, unless something is... Uh, is a uh, big baby panda sneeze, right? Is that that's the only. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Next, he asks, uh, um, uh, match against any current WWE star, who would it be? Ziggler. Ziggler. Mm. Yeah. Or, or Jericho. I might have my opportunity to get Jericho. Well, yeah, you just left. Well, yeah, I'll find him in the street somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> just, go, just go to oh, a Fozzie uh, show. His band is uh, is playing our big summer concert. Uh, the, the Uproar Fest is coming to our area, and uh, I'm, I'll be broadcasting there all day. So I'm going to be trying to find him in leather pants somewhere. Nice, nice. Um, then, and, what's that? And then wrestle the hell out of him. <laughs> right there, right there on stage, right? Yeah, or in the alley, whatever. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, have you... I, he gets he gets weird with these. Have you ever worn a nun's habit? A nun's hat? A nun's habit. What is that? It's the entire it's a, outfit that they wear. Oh, yeah. And, like, who has it? They're not American unless <laughs> you put those on. He follows up with, was it comfortable? Uh, it was at first. And then, and then you look in the mirror, and I started just hitting all these Whoopi Goldberg lines. <laughs> and that, <laughs> It were they were they so from much, the right movie though? Right. It wasn't so much wearing the, the dress. It was the uh, the racism that comes with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. Moving on. <clears throat> Greatest and best jobber of all time. You mean enhancement talent? Yes. <laughs> uh I I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't get really a. I don't really have a, an opinion on who who the best is. I'll tell you the best I've encountered is Bad Boy Barry Hardy. He used to tag with Gilbert when he was Dwayne Gill. I just that's a personal tie. I like those guys. Nice, nice. And finally, he asks, uh, best Vince McMahon, eighties Attitude Era or twitchy flailing today's Vince? I think Vince McMahon's like a fine wine. He gets better in age, and uh, it just keeps getting better. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I, I wanted to toss it to the guys here on Skype. Is he uh, watching this? Is Vince watching? I hope so. <laughs> you know, he's, he's watching. Sometimes we suspect that there's somebody up there watching this, but mm-hmm. you never know. Uh, I want to give an opportunity to the guys here on Skype because uh, uh, so they can get uh, uh, edge in. Um, you guys have any questions for Mr. Castle? I do, yeah, but it has awesome. to wait until last. Oh, so, yeah, you have your question, of course. Yes. So. <laughs> Uh-oh, is there a juicy one staring? There's, there's, yes, there's, there is. I don't know, it, it got pretty uh, it got pretty heated last last week when he did this question. Yeah. So, um, I'm not, uh, Josh, I'm not putting anything in my mouth. <laughs> it doesn't have to go that way. Yeah, it That's doesn't. That's all I'll say. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, we got one. From, we actually got one from the chat room uh, from Hayforn. He asked, will Dalton come hang out with him for his birthday? Yeah, for a price. I am available. <laughs> There you go. Um, actually, Hot Wheels wants to know uh, who past or present wrestlers would you like to wrestle that you haven't had the opportunity oh, to wrestle yet? Oh, past, past wrestling? Past or present. Well, I did the uh, the present one, right? Yeah, yeah. Macho Man. I think that would be fun. Hmm. Well, like, on that, I got to throw a shout what? out to... Uh, or Ricky Rice from AWA. Only because I've watched like a million of his matches on... ESPN Classics. <laughs> With that one, I, I have to show, throw a shout out to uh, Gregory Iron because he had the sweetest Macho King T-shirt at Resolution this past weekend. <laughs> it was it was pretty nice. He, he wears it during the promo that you'll see on TV. Um, excellent. Okay, uh, we we were talking about uh, your nicknames before. Uh, how'd you like? We had a big one for the Party Peacock, really in depth. But charismatic milkshake. How did that come about? Did not invent that. That was actually dubbed from uh, Sweet and Sour Larry Sweeney. He gave that to me before I even started wrestling. Oh, that's oh, wow. nice. And he's actually, uh, I left that kind of out of my 
my story. He was a he was the last person, the, the one main person who gave me the push to, to finally start training. Excellent. Excellent. Nice. Uh, one from the chat room here from Bobby, who's on the show usually, Bobby FJ Town. Uh, he asked, do you put your radio persona into your character when you wrestle, or, or, is, it, or is all this you? It's all me. Yeah. It's all me. It's the same person. I don't, uh, I don't put on a, a act for the radio or, or the ring. Just kind of, just kind of beef it up a little bit so the people in the back row can hear me. Excellent. Excellent. Um, uh, I, have a, I have a quick question for Dalton. Okay. Uh, this guy, this guy ties into what we were going to talk about because I know you have a big match coming up at Cage Fury against one Ray Rowe. Uh, I'm down here in Texas, and Ray Rowe has uh, sort of been tearing his tearing up the Texas scene as one of the top stars. Uh, I don't know if you know, he's been fighting uh, transvestite uh, luchadors. He's been fighting uh, man that dr- men that dress up as uh, giant monkey men. Um, my question is, what does the party pre, uh, party peacock bring to the table when fighting someone like Ray? Oh, well, jeez. I've <laughs> only been wrestling humans, so like, <laughs> more prepared for this than I, I thought I was prepared. Now that I know that, I'm a little worried. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? I'm, I'm a real athlete. I'm a New York State Greco-Roman champion, uh, NCAA wrestler. I've a world team member for beach wrestling, and uh, I think I think I'm going to handle myself just fine in that ring with Ray. You know, speaking of Ray, yeah. I, I did put a call out for questions on uh, IWC's Facebook group, and uh, actually Ray Rowe did respond to it. Uh, he he wanted me to ask uh, uh, you how he plans to remember his name after he kicks you in the teeth and drops you on your head. Is, uh, is that where memories are kept? Or are they kept in the teeth? I apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Is this gonna I mean, there is change? wisdom teeth back there. I don't know oh, if there's fuck. memory teeth, though. How hard do you have to be kicked to, to get your wisdom teeth knocked out? I don't know. He's going to have to see my uh, my old dentist because those bitches are gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I woke up in the middle of them removing all four of them. It was a couple of years ago. And I swear to you, the, the foggy memory I have is the, the, the doctor with his foot on the chair by my head. And he's yanking <laughs> on my teeth. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then he saw I was awake, and then they turned the gas up. Uh, that It could have been a dream, but that's what I remember. That's unfortunate. Maybe. Um, wow. Zero <laughs> uh, 2K in the chat room wants to know what your favorite Neil Diamond song is. Play me. Or you don't bring me flowers with anyone. <laughs> that one's got Barbara Surprise in <laughs> Excellent. Uh, speaking of the match, uh, it was revealed on uh, IWC's website uh, that your match is uh, going to become a number one contender shot with Ray Rowe. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that you want to share? It's about damn time, is what I'm saying. Uh, now you uh, did. You know, it is about damn time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've been here over a year. I think I've had a pretty good. Uh, I don't know my record, but I've, I can count. I don't know. I've, I've put a lot of wins. Let's just go with that. I've, I've put up a, a good performance each time, and uh, it just makes the match mean that much more. Mm-hmm. I mean, before, I, I don't like to lose, but now that I know that the number one contendership's on the line, yeah, I mean, I'm going to become a little stronger, obviously. Maybe I won't fool around as much. And, and, and you definitely uh, um, you have a lot of supporters in the crowd down here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, well, greater Pittsburgh area, of course, you know, in, in uh, West Virginia and up in Clearfield, where uh, where you've been around with IWC. Uh, but but I got to say, you you've also I think uh, 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 gained that a bit from your interactions with one Justin Plummer on uh, AfterShock, including what I think is the first ever pillow fight match ever in IWC. Yeah, I won that shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Oh, go ahead. Just, uh, Justin's been great. I mean, I think what he's done with the aftershock program is, is uh, has been excellent. I, I just, I'm fortunate that he puts up with the uh, the as little patience as he has for me. I've been fortunate to, to to spend some time with him on the program. So, I mean, the pillow fight that was awesome. And I don't know if you saw him, but he totally bumped his head on those locks, taking like a flip bump off the bed. So, I guess you're welcome, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, something worked out because he ended up on Sci-Fi uh, just uh, just last week. So <laughs> I was just gonna say, television star, 
Sci-Fi Network, Justin Plummer. You know, I mean, he's going to be gone. I mean, somebody should get a contract on him before he's gone. Well, if if nothing else, maybe you'll get a uh, an aftershock bump off of him. Ooh, yeah, maybe maybe I too can be on Sci-Fi talking about how I used to be in a frat and I used to have to make out with boys to get into it. I don't know if that's <laughs> part of the story or not. Exactly. I, I, the episode I, have to I say, like to imagine. I, I have to say that that was one of my first nights working ringside. Yeah. Uh, and I, I remember you guys carrying in parts of the bed after the show was over to get it set up. And I, I had no idea after what was party. going on. Yeah, you don't get to go in locker rooms, but that's what happens after wrestling shows. In comes the bed, out comes the pillows. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and sometimes they go for a steam. Yeah. As, as as was on one of the episodes. Yeah. So, you know. with with And tell me, was a play, see, the one where uh, you guys went for a steam here at, at IWC, at Sammy Callahan's walking around in his skivvies in the background. Yeah. Did he have he any that. idea what was going on? Sammy, Sammy does that. He always, he never knows where he puts his pants. I never know why he never has pants. <laughs> and that's why you don't, that's why we don't go backstage when we do those shows. Yeah. Yeah, I, we just stay away from that. Yeah, I try not to go back, backstage. Cause... Hey, bro, it's just sports, just, uh, just guys, just guys being guys sitting in steam rooms, walking around. You wouldn't shower with your clothes on. You... He has a good point. Yeah. I don't know why I always have a camera near the showers, though. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you guys plugging that and watching the the sisterhood. By the way, I, I do appreciate that a lot. It's great stuff. It's, it's great stuff. <laughs> Dalton uh, is responsible for thirty five percent of the uh, the the male oriented porn that you find on the internet. Yeah, and uh, now that the syphilis outbreak has happened, I'm I'm shut down. Oh. I'm gonna pick up this wrestling thing because the porn business is getting shut down. Oh man. At least, at least you're 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 able to make that uh, uh, pivot in your career and carry on, and it seems yeah, to be well, working out very well for you. Yeah, this wrestling's my my safety net, is what it is. Exactly. Uh, before I ask my uh, my question, um, Hey Forn in the chat wants to know if you've received or participated in any tryout matches uh, for any of the bigger promos, uh, promotions, uh, Impact, ROH, WWE. Well, number one. I don't think if, if that were true, if I have, it wouldn't be wise to speak of it. Um, <laughs> and two, no, I, I, I haven't, no. That's a shame. Or have I? Oh! oh. All right. Hold on. Let me try this again. Hold on. <laughs> I haven't. Or have I? <laughs> <laughs> and that's when and that's when Sor cues the dramatic music. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. All, All right. right, sir. Oh wait, we got one in our room from the chat room. Uh, what is this? Would he be willing to wrestle the sex robot in Phoenix Pro Wrestling? I have not seen the sex robot. Oh. Is it? Is it Shockwave? No, it's something else. <laughs> the, the Phoenix is uh, up here in Johnstown, PA. Uh, wait. A, a newer promotion. Tell me it's just a dildo like on a, uh, on a pole. It just goes like this. <laughs> wow. I, wow. I need to get out the Johnstown I have a sex robot this. right here. <laughs> <laughs> There's the counter. Sorry, uh, sorry, audio listeners, for that one. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, we have a standing question for all of the... Uh, the interviews that we do here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, one of the members that couldn't be here, uh, Bo Diggity, he has... Sweet name. Yeah, yeah, I gave it to him. It, it's That's mine. Um, Make sure you take your credit. I am taking Make sure you credit. take your credit. Um, yeah, should I take... Do I need this on? Do I, should I be shirtless for this question? No, uh, no, no. You can, <laughs> you can leave your shirt on. Yeah. Um, he requested that we always ask uh, interviewees... Uh, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be, and why? It's a good one. It's a good one. Um, well, initially, I always want to say kumquat, but then I got to remind people uh, kumquat's actually a fruit. But it's just fun to say. It's just fun to say. Exactly. Uh, I I think I think broccoli. I'd be broccoli mainly because. 
Well, it's delicious. I mean, it's attractive. Kids love the, and uh, if you ever look at broccoli, there's just it just goes different directions all over the place. If from the from the start, it just keeps breaking up, breaking up. So there's a lot of pieces to it, and it's hard to understand. And <laughs> it's delicious. Hey, right, I have to uh, I have to point out at this time that that is only the second time that we've had. A, a a vegetable named. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the well, first he, he technically uh, said so, a, so, well, sweet potato is still in debate. Um, <laughs> yes, that's still that's still into the judges. Uh, the first time we asked that question was to that Rachel. Also sounds like a racist answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was uh, that was Luke, Logan Shulo. Yeah, that said sweet sweet potato. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, he looks like sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna guess Logan Shulo when you said that. Um, but uh, Rachel Summerlin from Texas said that she would be a carrot, and gave a good reason as to why. And then um, Dombrowski, She's Dombrowski like, you know, last week said that he would be a potato so he could practice punching whoever asked that question in the face. <laughs> and so you are successfully the second person to actually name a vegetable. Mm. So congratulations! Well, you're, you're welcome and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, there's there's one last one to the chat room. Uh, Hot Wheels wants to know if you can have a handicap match with him. He's in a wheelchair. Um, oh, I get it. <laughs> I get it. That's sad. <laughs> but yes, yeah, of course I will. But. Uh, just like the birthday party pre- or question, I'm available. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, Dalton Castle, he's uh, going to be here in Pittsburgh area here, IWCWrestling.com. Caged Fury, although his match is not in a cage, but with Ray Rowe, it's probably going to be just as brutal. Um, the cage is a metaphor in our match. <laughs> the, ca- the cage of your heart, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the cage of all of our hearts are. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so, is there anywhere else you want to plug? Uh, where can people find you? Where Where are you uh, showing up here uh, in the near future? Uh, actually, after well, I got after uh, IWC, I think I'm, I'm going to be out in Agawam, Massachusetts. After this, and then uh, Bridgewater, Massachusetts, and then. I don't know. I gotta look at the calendar, and then back to IWC. I think there's another show coming up real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Buffalo right. places. I post everything on my book faces, and I announce it on my Twitter. But uh, I'll be around. I, I didn't realize I'd be quizzed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Always have to be prepared, vegetables and all. Uh, you're all, of course over on Facebook, Facebook.com/slash The Dalton Castle. We're gonna post that stuff. Attractive. Yeah, how about that? Um, and also on Twitters as well. Oh, and if you're coming to the show, IWC this weekend, I believe I've got new T-shirts on the way. They should be there by Saturday. Excellent. Excellent. Are you, are, are you out of the White Castle looking ones? I am. Those were, That was the first time. I bought those like a couple of years ago. I, I only got like a few of them. That's a shame. That's a shame. They're all gone. I figured it, it might be best to steer away from copying White Castle for a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to be thought of the guy that people eat at 3 a.m. and then spend the whole next day on the toilet because of. It'd be an interesting first impression, but yeah, I can understand one <laughs> and stay away from that. All right, thanks a lot. So delicious. And you make me want to poop. <laughs> <laughs> Any parting words for the uh, Mayhemers out there, sir? Well, I appreciate the uh, listening to what I have to say and being interested in me. Continue to watch the Sister of the Traveling Tights and watch Dalton Castle. There's no telling how high this peacock will fly. Oh, and spread the word of the peacock. I need your help. I mean, people don't know about me. Only you do. Excellent. May Amherst, go spread the word of the peacock. Thanks a lot, Dalton, for joining us. Uh, now we're going to go to the break, check out what's going on on Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, and see what happened a couple weeks ago. A little teaser of uh, uh, what went down at RWA Aggression 4 down in West Newton. DVDs now available over at SorgatronMedia.com. And we'll be back with Remember When? Oh, yeah, yeah that's a Twitter announcement today. Did you not see did you not did that, that happen? happen? Uh, it's it's out, baby, they're baby. guessing Honeymoon. 
Oh, I didn't know when. I was just asking when the tweet was. Right, and, and that's then you're it. Gonna, that's and the answer gonna... question, Wrestle fan. That's it. That's all it is. <laughs> it's for for the love of God, he's five, and the WWE is still going to be able to tell him who is cool and who is not. Usually, no. Excellent. Is Khloe Kardashian going to be tweeting about this? I hope so. I hope. Uh, this is Wrestle fan. He's from down in Corpus Christi. Let's keep it basic. I've been a young fly, flashy motherfucker, and that's why these faggots hating. Gracing the pavement, I've been had rims, racings, and datings, and y'all just acting. Y'all just mad when you see the boy light up. Yeah, I love bro, but don't need to get hot up. You ride what? No. Hey guys, we're back. Thanks, Dalton Castle, again for joining us. Great interview. Uh, again, go check him out at the Dalton Castle on Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, so now is the time of the show where we remember when. Now, this week, uh, of course, SummerSlam was just by, you know, depending on who, who you ask, they say, well, it wasn't a great SummerSlam. Eh, it was one of the better SummerSlams. I personally think it was one of the better slams we've had in a while. Um, so, you know, but that's my opinion. Um, but I want to remember back to uh, what was your favorite SummerSlam moment? Uh, or for me, I want to go with like my earliest. It, it was the earliest, I think. Um you know, seeing a lot of Summer Slams over the years, I still hearken back to, they mentioned it, I think, on the show, the Mega Bucks versus the Mega Powers, uh, partly because I was a prepubescent boy, uh, and, and, and it was Elizabeth ripping her skirt off during that match that I remember so fondly. Uh, but <laughs> and I mean, and sword turned into a man. And it sprouted. Um, and then... Oh! <laughs> So uh, I just wanted to know what were your favorite, if not earliest, uh, 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 moments uh, that you recall? How about you, Chachi? No. Uh, that time that sword sprouted uh, <laughs> during, during SummerSlam. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I would have to say that's my favorite SummerSlam moment. No, mm-hmm. I, I really got I got nothing for this. No, one. no, you were never like a follower of the SummerSlam, so it was no. never special to you. No. no? Well, growing up, we didn't really order the pay-per-views. That, well, I remember from the tapes. Yeah, well, so. and my dad was a cheap-ass bastard. <laughs> He'd spend all of his money on boxing, but not wrestling pay-per-views. That's so. sad. Not boxing. So, uh, I, I remember, like... Boxing was so bullshit. Well, uh, I got to watch Tyson bite but, off you know, Holyfield's you know It's fixed. It was faker than wrestling. It's fixed. Everybody knows that, Chachi. <laughs> all right, how about you, wrestle fan? I take you back. Not too long ago, because... Do I need to Because he's a fetus. The result Riz did it for me. The year was 2005. Fetus. We had a feud that culminated at SummerSlam. Mm. Featuring one Rey Mysterio and one Eddie Guerrero with an important role in the center. And that was a child. The oh. ladder match to determine custody of a child. First to ever... I just got really dark. Okay. Uh, maybe that's just not a Skype feed. Um, yep. the, first, the first time we've ever had a ladder match of that sort. And I remember, because we have made jokes ever since, of us wanting it to be a Dominic on a pole match. And it never fucking happened. And the match was sort of okay, but they sort of botched a lot. But... <laughs> There you go. There's my memory of SummerSlam. There you go. Thanks a lot, uh, Riz. Uh, I mentioned this before. I was a little kid, and I saw two guys who looked the same <laughs> wrestle each other for the first time in my wrestling, like, in my career watching wrestling mm-hmm. or life watching wrestling. The Undertaker versus the Undertaker. That will always live on as the memory of me seeing two guys who fought and looked the same. It just was weird at the time because I was just a little kid. And the little kid inside of me still thinks that there's two Undertakers out there. But, alas, no. <laughs> Excellent. How about you, Bo Diggity? Bo fucking Diggity. Diggity remembers a time when celebrities really honestly cared about the WWE, one of whom being Regis Philbin. 
there is a there they were flipping through this and I believe it was a SummerSlam that was at Madison Square Garden, I wanna say. And they just flipped to it and it's Regis Philbin. Just, just he's got he's got his like button down shirt, he's got it like pulled up to his shoulders. I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> and he's the guns fully displayed and he's just yeah! and I I saw this was later on. I did not see this live because it happened like the early eighties. I was too young for that that whole thing. But it was hilarious. And uh, I just remember seeing that picture of Regis Philbin, and I've been looking. I'm now looking for it, but I can't find it, which is making me mad because I want to find this picture, and I'll see if I can find it and send it later in the show. So go DM me if you find it there. Excellent, excellent. And uh, with that, let's head over to Mad Mike. Oh, monkey action. Does Monkey have a favorite summer wow. sound memory? I'm trying to get him to sit on the microphone. Oh, there it goes. Hands it, free. It took the camera. Hands free. I knocked him down. Oh. I, I was sitting and here trying that, to get him to sit on the microphone, and it took the camera to be able to do that. And with that, let's go to the Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem. Let's try not to cut it off this week. Sorry, guys. Mayhem Show fans, it's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Now, I was just finished watching Raw, and I think a revelation came to me. Uh, the new, you know, promo before, the new signature thing before Raw, and every WWE show is, then, now, forever. And I think I finally realized what that means. It's how I feel watching these three-hour Raws. Because the first hour... Then, it's basically all recaps. The second hour now is what just happened. It's when they show recaps of what happened an hour ago. And, and, and the third hour just feels like it's dragging. And keep in mind, I'm watching, fast forwarding through a whole bunch of segments. And it still feels like an endurance trial at times. Just because it seems like while they have a lot of good matches not many of them mean anything. I mean, it's great that Antonio Cesaro is going to soon, hopefully, be the very European champion. But the primetime players and Kofi and R-Truth, why are they still feuding? They, they Kofi and R-Truth have dominated them at every single turn. It's, I mean, I know we want a tag division, but the primetime players should have won at SummerSlam, and they should have gotten the belts, or they should at least have another shot at them, or something to that effect, because if Kofi and R-Truth are just going to keep beating them the whole time, then what the hell is the point? Uh, obviously we saw <laughs> the last match of Chris Jericho. Awesome match, awesome feud, I mean, both these guys, we could watch them for hours. If this somehow leads to Dolph cashing in and being the champion at WrestleMania and going against Chris Jericho there, kind of be okay with that. I'd actually be really okay with that. But speaking of Chris Jericho, if this is really his last match, um, I the Mad Mike fact of the week is about Chris Jericho. It's a little weird. Um, I want to look up the people he's had the most success against people who's had, who's had the least success against, and, you know, none of these are really that surprising. But, then I decided to dig a little bit deeper, and found that Chris Jericho is undefeated at Clash of the Champions. I don't know why I found that interesting, but it's, it, it just was to me. So, thank you, WrestlingData.com, for telling us that the Ayatollah of Rock and Roll at the Clash of the Champions is undefeated. And uh, also, we have an odd number of teams in the Mayhem Fantasy Football League. So, Sorg, you gotta tell people to sign up. We need more people because the football season starts pretty soon. And I need more people to crush under my boot. Because I am the Mayhem Show's Reckoning. And yes, I'm stealing a gimmick from someone else who is in the Fantasy Football League. But I don't give a shit. You know why? Because I'm Mad Mike, and I'm fucking awesome. Peace, bitches.
<laughs> and we're back, and while we were uh, listening to the minute, AJ found that the guns of Regis Filmin. Wow, look at those. I had no idea he was that strapped. Shit. He just... Yeah, we can kill that. Motherfucking... What? I don't know. What? <laughs> Kill guns now because they're he dude's like 80 years old now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I want to throw out a uh, from the chat room while we were talking about SummerSlam before. Uh, Sierra 2K's favorite moment was uh, first ever TLC match. Uh, Bobby FJ Town, uh, Hart and Davy Boy Smith at uh, Wembley Stadium, of course, which I thought about as I was watching some of the Olympics, uh, tennis stuff just because it was on. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for that. I, you know. Raw, okay, we're a few weeks in here of the three-hour Raws. I know, I know, we really deviate in the uh, in the hangout from week to week, uh, from paying attention to Raw uh, for three hours. That that definitely oh, yeah. happens. That definitely happens. Um, I really oh, feel like Raw is not meant for me to pay attention the entire time. Right. Right. It's, uh, well, what? <laughs> Then no, Raw, so that Raw is not formatted. Then I have to pay attention to every detail throughout the night because that'll just remind oh, me of the important okay. parts. I don't. You, you know, I'll agree. It's not formatted that way. Yeah. But it probably should be, right? I mean, in theory, right? Well, I will go with uh, uh, wrestle fans alter ego, uh, Mr. Brandon Stroud. <laughs> He actually pointed this out in, I think it was last week's Best and Worst. And he said, listen, they keep doing these video packages and replaying the video packages and showing things that have already happened in the moments ago stuff. When Monday Night, when Monday Nitro was happening at the same time and you knew your viewers were flipping back and forth, yeah, that was important. Now, when you're the only game in town and you're on for three hours, you can leave those little segments alone. Well, I think for a certain point, like, are you talking about ones they're doing right away after the commercial break? The fact that moments ago, CM Punk said, you know, dropped another pipe bomb or whatever, and he did, right. like... Or earlier in the night, CM Punk did this, or mm-hmm. the show right. opened with this, like... We don't need to see that anymore. At a certain point, I think I think it's understandable, and you're, you're going to see it more, because they're going to recap every damn thing that happened in the first hour, because most of you showed up at 9 o'clock because you still think that it's two hours. Right. Right? I'm, so I, I, you're going to have a lot of that. But yeah, it does seem a little over-excessive. Um, it, it's like they, they stretch out that point even more throughout the night to try to build up the anticipation for what's coming up for the, the end mm-hmm. of the show. Uh, and it's a long haul, uh, but I don't. I don't know. Like they're expecting people to go in and out. Uh, it doesn't. But they, they it, most wrestling fans. I don't want to seem like a little dickish or anything, but most most wrestling fans have a uh, short in- attention span mm-hmm. when it comes to what they like. Mm-hmm. They and. Probably WWE's going. Oh, let's just replay this again and this is m- refresh their memories a little bit about what happened. But okay. it 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 does tend to get redundant when fans like us who remember that stuff go on and see like, oh, they're doing this shit again. It should be let's, like it's almost. Let's, see, to the let's point. see what Cranky Vince is doing. It's almost to the point where really they should say, "You want to see what just happened? Go back to the website." You know, why don't they push them back to the website and say, We're "Hey, here's the stuff to. you missed." You know, yeah, I, they really should do that. I mean, that that seems like the place that then doesn't annoy the rest of us mm-hmm. to a point. Uh, and the problem is the recaps are so long at certain points; they replay an entire like thirty seconds from time to time. I don't even like going to the Raw Rebound on SmackDown where it's like, well, no, I can skip 10 minutes because they're going to show everything that happened at the end of Raw. You you know? How many times they showed Brock Lesnar breaking Shawn Michaels' arm last night? Yeah, yeah. They opened the show with him making uh, trips tap. And then they did the whole thing. And then they're like, oh, Brock <laughs> Lesnar My- broke Shawn's arm. Exactly, exactly. And then 45 minutes later... It's like we forgot about it because we're goldfish. Hey, thanks for reminding us that the, his arms broke. Yeah. Hey, guess what? You guys remember that time that uh, Brock Lesnar broke, broke shot Michael's arm? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. His arm still broke? 45 no. minutes after that, which is five minutes before they bring him on for satellite. 
Hey guys, we're gonna talk to Shawn Michaels coming up, but let's take a look at Brock Lesnar breaking his arm! And then five minutes after Shawn Michaels is done, they're like, here's a recap of what Shawn Michaels had to say in his satellite interview. And then, Brock Lesnar breaking his arm! Yeah, yeah. Um, God. Sorry. If I'm a mid-card guy, yeah. I would be so unbelievably pissed off at Shawn Michaels. I would be fucking livid. Because they gave him 15 minutes of promo time for a a, a thing he wasn't even in. He was involved with that for one promo and one gang rape after a vehicle accident. <laughs> Shark after- Week. But, he, but he's Shawn Michaels, and they put Shawn Michaels in because Shawn Michaels ratings. Shawn Michaels, uh, something people remember. So they're going to be like, what's Shawn Michaels got to say? Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels. I mean, Shawn Michaels. Michaels. he's getting his arm broken. Yeah, so... Like, I'm just out, and I, I would like, I would really like if this whole feud means Triple H is actually, like, done done. Nope. Yeah, yeah. I know, but I hope that this is, like, the start of the end, and they just, like, say, okay, you are actually done. Listen, Remember? Retire. And another, Triple H another take. Really another take back. Another take back to um, uh, the uh, <laughs> strap. <Okay. laughs> it's Skype breaking fail. up, so I can't really tell. Um, another take back to the Stroud column. Remember when the Taker and Triple H feud was about the fact that they were the last of their breed and they were coming to their end? Uh, Triple H, when is that going to happen? You should probably do that yeah. soon. Exactly. There's a great article going on uh, over uh, our friend at 50 Matches over at, uh, wait, let me get the address here. 50 Matches that define the decade dot blogspot dot com. Uh, spare thoughts. Are fans over the game? Of course, if you watch SummerSlam, Triple H uh, had a, you know, obviously there was a play for a little bit of symphony, sympathy uh, for him. Uh, uh, losing the match, uh, you know, representing WWE and everything at SummerSlam. But we had, like, you tapped out chance. It wasn't entirely <laughs> supported of Triple yeah. H. So. Oh, Sympathetic what, my ass. They had Nana Nana chance. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what me and Bo Diggity were doing when this was going on? Hmm. We were A, laughing. <laughs> B, saying this shit is gone on too fucking long. Yeah. And see, we I I know I was. I was hoping that Brock Lesnar would come back out and break the other arm <laughs> and, and him have off. him come up and just go, I'm sorry, and like flail around like a little fish. That's all right. we want. Yeah. Riz and, did say that. And then I did this and I just kept going, I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> And, and, I was, and, and a perfect, a perfect point to this from, from this article is like in, in, instead of getting sympathy from the crowd, he uh, Triple H was supposed to be valiant defeat. Uh, quote here: Instead, he was humiliated. Humiliated. So I was hoping that they went the uh, WWE 12 route and just had the uh, the uh, King of Kings throne rise up through the stage <laughs> and uh, just have him be like, "All right, I'm done." Tap out. Sit on it. Yeah, yeah. I'd love yeah. to see that happen. Just done. Yeah, That'd but even then, the fan, you know, I think it does say a lot as to what, why he got that reaction. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, as much as people get excited when he comes out, he's been kind of been stretched out over the last few months. I think people are a little bit tired of him, you know, because uh, he, he pops up enough. Hey, yeah. we're talking about uh, Triple H and Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Let's cut to a clip of Brock Lesnar breaking Shawn Michaels' arm. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Maybe it was just a little, a little too much on us, you know. But I don't know. It, it's, uh, I, I don't know. Hey, we, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes with this uh, three-hour raw experiment. Um, you and, know and why I tune in at nine o'clock? Why? It's not that I forget that raw is three hours. It's just you know you're never reminded. I am ignoring the fact that raw is three hours. That first long. hour is dead to you. Yeah, it's not there. I you am- know what I watch while I'm waiting for 9 o'clock to show up? Hmm. Porn. Uh, no, either Big Bang Theory or How I Met Your Mother. That's why I have a DVR. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Which reminds me, you can record those. Damn. <laughs> I forgot. And, uh, and of course, there was another big strike in the uh, social media side. Uh, uh, Wheels is bringing it up here because I know he's getting it on his Android device. We got the uh, WWE app. Do I have music on here? Do I do have this audio on? Hold on. Hold on because I want to hear the fireworks. There's the fireworks. Whoa! It Whoa! got fireworks. It's got pyro. Oh, my God. Loading pyro. And the bell rings. Um, it's still going. It's not too fantastic, really, that I could tell. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> seem that like it doesn't update as, as much as say uh, you know the website, because you know you you can't like you go on there. There's like a picture of something just happened without in the last ten minutes on a pay per view or or uh, on Raw, right? Uh, you don't get that as much. We we got a regular si- uh, uh, part. We got a link right into the Raw Active, uh, which is you know Twitter and and some of the touts and. There's other fun little things. It's Twitter streams with the raw hashtag. I'm sure not that one hashtag we were talking about earlier. Um, so, like bashing on there. Moment of impact, which is the picture with uh, uh, Lawler getting kicked in the head. Um, it's pretty cool. They do integrate. Um, it looks nice. I, I give them that. It looks <laughs> nice. Uh, they they do integrate the uh, superstars. Like on, on the iPad side, you got the full the full size guys. You get to scroll through like uh like they do on uh on the website so i mean that that works out pretty well although aj's not loading here that's probably because i have a first generation ipad uh the phone is, of course is a different format for that size screen and uh, aj why are you not why aren't you loading load it because the and, modern technology and it crashed and it crashed uh but, but the his point is that they have a my universe side but i don't get to see anything of it because they don't have pittsburgh you have to be oh. in a specific city there's not even i guess new york city isn't even in this thing Nope. Um, and, and I'm not entirely clear what I think is Dale, Arizona is in that bitch because they're oh, there all the time. Biloxi, Mississippi. Um, I hope there's no Nebraska in here. I'm going to be pissed. Milwaukee, Melbourne, Nebraska Australia. Nebraska won't know it's there. Let's we'll see. Well, if I go to Philadelphia and I join the conversation. Okay, so the WWE Philadelphia apparently is the hashtag. I can join the conversation. Let's see what it does here. You um, should type in, why it isn't just, there a WWE Pittsburgh? And leave. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's Twitter. Well, one, yeah. I'm going to type that right now from my Twitter. Where is WWE Pittsburgh? It, it is nice because it, uh, it does go right into, if you have Twitter set up on your iDevice, because it, it is integrated. Uh, you see, I didn't even have to do anything to set up. It just says, do you want to use your, tw- your Twitter account, which is already in iOS. Um, and, and I'm sure there's some similar mechanism uh, for, for the Android app. Um, but yeah, and especially if they're just doing a hashtag like that, why are they only doing that? Why can't you just be like, well, I guess they have to be a little selective. I want, I want hashtag WWE Jamestown PA to be on here. I want to know what my three friends watching Raw from that town are thinking about. That's real WWE Raw WWE Jamestown. It's all about. There's yeah, that's right. There's it, a WWE it, New York. It, John, I love John Cena, and it's flooding here. That's W. That's WWE Jamestown. There you go. There you go. There it is. Like, help me, I'm drowning. Oh, Save no, Johnson. So, um, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It, it's it's a nice it's a nice skin on all the stuff they're already doing. But I guess that's what you need, you know, because otherwise it's just the website. So it's another thing that lives with their their logo on your desktop. So, eh, not too bad. So, uh, have you, any of you guys got to play with the thing? Nope. 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 Nobody's even got to yep. do that. I'm too busy touting, right? Right. It, it talents at least, but they they pull back the reins on that, right? Kinda. Yeah. Just because I mentioned talent yeah. doesn't mean you get to flip me off. It does because I can just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> not fair. Not fair. All right. Um, I don't even have to put effort in it. I mean, half the time my arm's already there, so I can just flip it around. I can just turn it up. <laughs> turn it up. Turn it up. They're banging it. Banging it. <laughs> All right. Anything else you guys want to talk about? I'm pretty before? sure Sorg just uh, recorded a tout of me giving him the finger. No, that's going to be an Instagram. <laughs> oh. um, anything else we want to uh, bring up before we get out? I know we're going uh, probably pretty long on our first half here, so I want to uh, truck on out here. Anybody? Anybody? Going, going once? Uh, going twice? Seamus is a fucking heel. Seamus is a fucking heel. Yeah. I'm, we've had this Yeah, you know what? I, I, I kind of have to... On, on behalf of everybody who... Doubted, Bressel fan. Have he, we? Uh, he's right. 
have we came to the conclusion that CM Punk's a heel now? No, nope, not a nope. heel. No, not no. so much. He kicked Jerry Lawler in the head. I, I, I want to kick Jerry Lawler in the head world. many times. Yeah, there you go. He's just doing what the rest of us want to do. He speak for the people. Give <sighs> this. Him this. You guys that are is fun. much better heel turn than him not doing anything to help John Cena. Yep. If you want to make it heel, and you have Jerry Lawler, who is effective, as CM Punk put it, the minister of propaganda, and he's absolutely right on that point, by the way. You took out the guy who's always cheering for the faces that are heels, and he says, you show me some respect, and kicked him in the back of the head, and then gave a mean scowl and was holding the belt over Jerry Lawler, and was acting very mad after John Cena basically told him to go outside and play a nice game of hide and go fuck himself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, you so know what he concurs I, with? That right there. That's what he concurs with. Yeah. I, 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 mean, think, yeah. I don't think it's Fred I, don't, I don't think it's CM Punk definitively saying I'm a face or I'm a heel. He's had a confliction. It's the fact that, you know, he's done all this stuff. Cena still won't say he's the best in the world and no one else will. So he had that confliction. It doesn't mean he's necessarily a face or a heel. Mm-hmm. He kicked in- the face announcer in the head. So what? Then you're not allowed to say anything about. Why do all faces about- have to be nice to all faces? And why do all heels have to be nice to all heels? That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Kane had to put up with Zack Ryder. Oh wait. No. Oh. oh wait. Yeah. I'm actually really glad that they acknowledged the fact that. So when we were in the hangout last night, we mentioned the fact that you have. Kane and Ryder on a tag team, even though Kane basically <laughs> murdered Ryder and did his like entire push. And then you had Miz and Daniel Bryan. Miz being the guy who basically beat the shit out of Daniel Bryan the entire time he was on NXT. So like right. nobody in there should have been in a tag team match. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate I, 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 that came out, he looked at Kane and went, Ugh. and they like they really drug out the fact that hey, why are why am I gonna tag with this guy? He tried to kill me with <laughs> fire from hell. <laughs> That's a <laughs> I, I have the theory that they per- they propositioned the idea for him to fight Kane and Zack Ryder got to the point where he's like, eh, he tried to kill me and he tried to drag me to hell, but God damn it, I haven't been on TV in like four months. Fuck, I'll do it. (laughs) They'll do anything for money. Yeah, he. Zack Ryder is a jobber for. He's a jobber for fame. That's really what it comes down to. He will do anything to be famous Mm -hmm. on TV. Mm hmm. And he doesn't want to go back to whatever New York pro wrestling or whatever it was. He doesn't want to go back there. He doesn't want to wrestle Big O. He doesn't. Nobody (laughs) wants to wrestle Big O. He does. He looks like he's primed for uh, WWE, though. Holy shit. All right, guys. Let's get out of here. Well, tell us what you learned from wrestling. You know, I'll start off. And, and Riz, I, I hope this isn't yours because it, and I'm, I'm getting this from you. Um, okay. But I learned that one of these things is not like the other. Yeah. Uh, if you're not on the Oops. visuals, uh, there's this uh, uh, one. The Bella Twins aren't really looking like twins anymore from the aftermath that the Riz has posted in uh, on the yeah. Facebook group. Uh, so Just one of the them got one of the Bellas boobies. got a boob job. And I I, I made the comment that uh, Nikki Bella, the one who got the boob job, is now a six, which in CM Punk terms turns the Bella Twins in a whole. To a ten. Hmm. Hmm. Before they were both fours. Hmm. And now they're ten. Now they're sixes. Well, one's a six. Uh, I love. I love how this this uh, comes down to uh, at the end of this uh, column. Well, I need a cigarette. You're welcome. <laughs> so there you go, uh, Chachi. What'd you learn? I learned that uh, Seamus can lie about a pinfall and hit. Uh, a major heel in the head with a shoe mm-hmm. and become a heel. But John or CM Punk can kick the number one face on the show in the head. Face announcer. Face announcer 
in I was the gonna head. say, if he's the number one face, that's sad. And is not. That's what I learned in wrestling this week. There you go. Uh, WrestleVan. Uh, I learned two things from wrestling this week. One, Caitlin. Is that it? And two, um, yeah, fuck Fred Listen, Durst. You just threw fuck. out the thumb, but for the audio listeners, I'm going to help you guys out because I am one. I am an audio listener. I listen every single week, and you should too. You need to help them out. Russell fan, tell them what you did. But basically, I'm giving my approval of everything that Caitlin is doing. Good. Boops. Good. I'm glad to Boops. that. And second thing I learned, fuck Fred Durst. Fuck David Arquette. Stop. David Arquette to- brought his championship belt. Exactly. His Stop. championship belt. You, you know, the one that he won. Yeah, yeah. Not only is he like the uh, the the wrestle nerds that bring their belts to the to the matches, he's the one that brought the one that he fucking won. <laughs> he won a belt and brought basically, it to SummerSlam. Basically, my point is stop paying attention to them. If you do that, eventually they'll leave. But they keep putting a camera on them. But he brought his own belt. I don't care. Fuck him. He won it in a match. All right, we went out, Riz. What'd you learn? I learned along the same lines, uh, Fred Durst is still a celebrity. <laughs> and he's actually a pirate fan and a total douchebag. Yeah, yeah. Fred doesn't know how to behave in front of the camera. I give him the middle finger. <laughs> oh, diggity. What has Fred Durst done? 1999. Sorg, Sorg. 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 What, did, what did I just say? If you don't if you stop paying attention to them, they will leave. I thought no they, I thought he did go away until we put a camera no on him. Sorg. What? Durst. What's that? Oh yeah, I'm getting flipped off. Thanks. Everybody, do the Fred Durst salute. Fred Durst. He doesn't deserve that salute. <laughs> you gotta make an angry face with it too. Yeah, yeah. Because Durst is angry at everybody yet. I think he's just mad because nobody thinks he's famous anymore. <laughs> he's Bo not. Diggity, Bo Diggity, what'd you learn from wrestling? Bo Diggity learned that Bo Diggity is actually decent uh, at at uh, uh, a Russian accent. And also, uh, Bo Diggity learned that Triple H, when he breaks his arm, apparently loses control of his legs mm-hmm. and can't walk any faster. And he walked. It's when a lot he's of pain. Apologizing. I'm sure it's a so lot of pain. I'm yeah, sorry I didn't walk out faster. <laughs> awesome. Uh, from the chat oh. room. What? Oh, uh, we forgot to do uh, Bobby tweets. Bobby tweets. Oh, we'll catch up with that in a second here. Uh, from the chat room, we learned. Uh, Bobby F J Town challenges Wrestle Fan to come to Johnstown and say that to his face. He'll get his come up come up in next week. Hmm. I learned that Antonio Cesaro is a bully and Caitlyn is slowly becoming my favorite diva. Ciro learned Brock Dagon. Uh, Bobby F. J-Town, who throws a shoe honestly? I also learned it's all about the nookie. And Hot Wheels learned that WWE 13 has too many doubles. Because there's, there's like John Cena, then there's like uh, Thugonomics. Like Dr. Uh, Triple H's. Yeah, there's like Triple H and DX Four, Triple H. 14 and... Triple H's, 12 oh, Shawn you know. Michaels, 3 Undertakers. And All right. a partridge and a pear tree. All right, does anybody... And still no fucking hornswoggle. Does anybody have the Bobby F. J. Town tweet updates? I have it. Okay, real quick. <clears throat> Bobby F. J. Town says, Bro was Star Wars. Hashtag screams of a Wookie. Hashtag tweets of one two. Mm. <laughs> In Soviet Russia, emails read you. Mm. Eating red vines and watching WMS, reminiscing about Brock Lesnar and Triple H memories. I remember when Brock looked less like a shark, which was never, by the way. And <laughs> Discussing SummerSlam memories on At Mayhem Show. My favorite is either the first TLC match or British Bulldog versus Bret Hart at Wembley. And that's it. All right. Thanks a lot. So, and then, then he tweeted about 
brownie bacon sundae. So we're going to do this every week? We're going to do a social media ambassador every week? Yes. Yeah, all right, all right. Too. Somebody else has to be in charge of that than me. Um, so we'll uh, figure that out in the meantime. Uh, so with that, hey guys, it's been the Wrestling Mayhem Show. 334 of these have been now completed upon this completion. Thank you again, Dalton Castle. Please check them out at the Dalton Castle and the Dalton oh. Castle on Facebook. Uh, and the Twitter shake. was the one before. Uh, hey, we're at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com. Let me get that up there. There we are. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip TV. We're on the Roku box on that Blip TV app. And we're also on Stitcher and other podcasting and video casting YouTubes and all that kind of stuff. Drop us a line to your email at... Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can also uh, drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. And buy the app WMS Gold where we talk about stuff. Since you saw a preview of earlier, no. it's in your app stores uh, for iOS and the Amazon App Store for Android. Dollar ninety nine connects you to everything on the site. Uh, please check us out. We're on Facebook, Twitter at Mayhem Show, on Google Plus. Discuss wrestling with us, We're having a good time on all those platforms. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week. Mayhem Show out. Fuck Fred Durst. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the